Well, good, good morning and greetings to you from the Harrison household. We're grateful for the opportunity to share with you again from God's holy word, the last week of Jesus' life upon the earth before his crucifixion and then his pending resurrection. We have looked at the Saturday or Sabbath of Jesus' last week in which Jesus uh, gathered at the house of uh, Simon the leper, and there his uh, feet uh, were anointed by Mary with a precious uh, ointment called spikenard. We looked at that uh, yesterday. And then, of course, on Sunday, we looked at uh, the celebration of Christ's triumphal entry into Jerusalem while riding on a donkey. And... Uh, we are grateful that today we are going to look at um, what we believe occurred on the Tuesday of Jesus last week uh, when he washed the disciples' feet as they gathered for a meal together, a meal in which Jesus instituted what we call Holy Communion or the Last Supper. And so with that being said, uh, let me read from you, for you a song from John chapter 13. And uh, before I do so, let me explain to you a little bit about the custom of when they, when they ate. Uh, many times we read through the scripture that they reclined at the table. And in the scripture we looked at yesterday when Jesus' feet were anointed, they were reclining at a table. In Psalm 25, we read that, um, that Jesus causes us to lay down in green pastures and that he sets a table before us, meaning that we recline in green pastures to um, uh, be lavished upon a, a bounty of, of, of a blessing at Christ's table. Well, what they, the custom was, what they would do is they would take their outer garment off and they would wrap it up and use it somewhat like a pillow and they would place it under their left uh, arm and side and, uh, and would recline on their left and that would make their right hand available for eating and then their feet would be laid out, and then the head of the next person to their right would basically be in the general area of, of uh, their, their chest. And so we kind of get a picture of Jesus and his disciples reclining at a table, uh, leaning on their left uh, uh, side and using their right to eat with. This being said, we understand why it would be very important for feet to be clean when reclining, especially when um, people wore uh, sandals in the day. And, and of course, you can imagine how dusty and dirty feet get uh, from walking on uh, those dirt and rough roads. And so it was important for the host of a, a, a host in a house that was uh, hosting a meal to uh, offer to wash the, the feet of those he was entertaining. And so with that in mind, we read from John chapter 13. I'm going to begin with the first verse. It was just before the Passover feast. Jesus knew that the time had come for him to leave this world and go to the Father. Having loved his own who were in the world, he now showed them the full extent of his love. The evening meal was being served, and the devil had already prompted Judas Iscariot, son of Simon, to betray Jesus. Jesus knew that the Father had put all things under his power and that he had come from God and he was returning to God. So he got up from the meal, took, out his, took off his outer clothing and wrapped a towel around his waist. And after that, he poured water into a basin and began to wash his disciples' feet, drying them with the towel that was wrapped around him. And so we get a, a picture, a mental image of Jesus going around the table with the disciples reclined, with their feet uh, outstretched behind them, and going behind each one and washing their feet. And then the scripture reads, he came to Simon Peter, who said to him, Lord, are you going to wash my feet? And Jesus replied, you do not 
realize now what I am doing, but later you will understand. No, said Peter, you shall never wash my feet. Jesus answered, unless I wash you, you have no part with me. Then Lord, Simon replied, not just my feet, but my hands and my head as well. Jesus answered, a person who has had a bath needs only to wash his feet. His whole body is clean and you are clean, though not every one of you, for he knew who was going to betray him. And that was why he said, not everyone was clean. When he had finished washing their feet, he put on his clothes and returned to his place. Do you understand what I've done for you? He asked them. You call me teacher and Lord, and rightly so, for you also should wash one another's feet. I've set you an example that you should do as I have done for you. I tell you the truth, no servant is greater than his master, nor is a messenger greater than the one who sent him. Now that you know these things, you will be blessed if you do them. The scripture continues in verse 18. I'm not referring to all of you. I know those I have chosen, but this is to fulfill the scripture. He who shares my bread has lifted up his heel against me. I'm telling you now before it happens so that when it does happen, you will believe that I am he. I tell you the truth. Whoever accepts anyone I send accepts me. And whoever accepts me accepts the one I have sent. After he had said this, Jesus was troubled in spirit and testified, I tell you the truth, one of you is going to betray me. His disciples stared at one another at a loss to know which of them he meant. One of them, the disciples whom Jesus loved, was reclining next to him, Simon Peter, motioned to this disciple and said, are you, uh, and asked, and said, excuse me, ask him which one he means. Leaning back against Jesus, in other words, the, the disciple is here, he leans back against Jesus and asks him this, Lord, who is it? Jesus answered, it is the one whom I will give this piece of bread when I have dipped it in the dish. We have over here to our left a beautiful um, portable communion set that was uh, lovingly made by Bill Neblett. We have a chalice, a plate that is called a paten. There is also a bowl. And I want to thank uh, my understanding is what Jesus was saying here is that the one who would dip the bread in the sop in the bowl with him would be the one that would betray him. And it was at that moment that Judas Iscariot was also dipping his bread in the sop at the same time into the bowl at the same time Jesus was. And so with that understanding, uh, we see this. It says, Jesus answered, it is the one whom I will give this piece of bread when I have dipped it in the dish. And then dipping the piece of bread, he gave it to Judas Iscariot, son of Simon. As soon as Jesus, as Judas took the bread, Satan entered him. What you are about to do, do quickly, Jesus told him. But not one at the meal understood why Jesus said this to him. Since Judas had charge of the money, some thought Jesus was telling him to buy what was needed for the feast or to give something to the poor. As soon as Ju Judas had taken the bread, he went out and it was night. Some teachers teach that it was at this point that the leaven left the room. At Passover, there was supposed to be no leaven in the house and um, the, the leaven uh, affects everything. And so some were, would say that Judas represented leaven and that he left the house at this point. And, the, and John writes here, and it was night. 
Now we have this darkness falling upon Jesus' last week on earth as the, the clock is ticking and the time of, of Christ's death is, is coming. And so then um, we, I want to um, switch from John's recording to Matthew. And uh, Matthew in chapter 26, we read this in verse 26 and following. While they were eating, Jesus took bread, gave thanks and broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat, this is my body. Then he took the cup and gave thanks and offered it to them, saying, Drink from it, all of you. This is my blood of the covenant, which is poured out for many for the forgiveness of sins. I tell you, I will not drink of this fruit of the vine from now on until the day when I drink it anew with you in my Father's kingdom. And when they had sung a hymn, they went out to the Mount of Olives. Many believe that because in the tradition of that meal, there were four uh four cups, four times in which drink was to be consumed. The third cup was the cup of Elijah. And it was always um, present at the Passover meal, but it was um, never drinking from. In fact, it was most often turned upside down. And many believe it was at this point in the meal that Jesus took the Elijah cup and used it in the Passover meal, the child, a child goes to the door. It's customary. The father, the patriarch, has the child go and open the door and look to see if Elijah is coming. Is Elijah coming? And the, and the child will look and say, no, Elijah's not coming. It'll continue their Passover meal. In this case, Jesus takes that cup in the spirit of Elijah. He is the fulfillment. He is the Messiah who has returned. And so with that being said, we have the institution of the Last Supper. Toward the end of this meal, he says, I will not drink again of the fruit of the vine until I drink it uh, with you in my Father's kingdom. In other words, even to this day, Jesus is waiting to drink uh, the fruit of the vine or wine again, and we will consume wine with him in uh, the marriage supper of the Lamb. So he is waiting out this time so that we can celebrate that meal together. And so it is that tomorrow we will continue in our devotional because it says here that they sang a hymn and they went out to the Mount of Olives. So we will pick up um, with what occurred there at the Mount of Olives in the Garden of Gethsemane. We'll see that tomorrow. God bless you and let us have a time of prayer. God, we're grateful for this teaching and how relevant it is to our lives today that a meal that Christ instituted so many years ago, the last week of his life upon earth before his death on the cross, that he instituted a meal that we can participate in together. And we give you thanks for this holy meal. We give you thanks that he set for us an example that we're to serve one another. He exemplified that in washing his disciples' feet and told them to go and do likewise. And so it is, Lord, we are so very grateful for the many people in life that serve. We're thankful for the public servants today who work during this time of quarantine to make uh, the area safe for us, whether they are um, care workers, uh, health care workers in the hospitals, doctors, nurses, uh, custodians, uh, those who work in the food industry, those who deliver food, police officers, firefighters, all of those who have to work, truckers who transport the food so that uh, we uh, can be provided uh, the basic needs of life so that uh, people can also respond to our health needs as well. We give you thanks for the people who serve. May we also serve others in the name of Jesus Christ. May we be people willing to serve. May we reach out to others and offer our services to them. Lord, we love you. We give you thanks in the precious name of Jesus in whom we pray. Amen.